<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Digimon Ghost Game video. This time I'm going to be talking about the most recent episode, which is episode 40, Spiral Beach. This episode sees Hiro and Gammon having a bit of an argument because Gammon has broken Hiro's tablet by biting it. Hiro doesn't seem too annoyed by this, but Gammon is incredibly and weirdly annoyed with Hiro, even though Gammon actually broke it. Throughout this episode, I was waiting for it to be caused by a separate Mon of the Week, a separate Digimon that was unrelated to the main Mon of the Week, especially later on when we see that a similar thing has happened to a girl's computer tablet thing, uh, but it was actually her dog. I thought that there'd be like a an unknown Digimon that was causing this, and that's why Gammon was so upset. But no, Gammon actually did break the tablet. He was just being kind of rude to Hiro, and that's what I didn't really understand. It wasn't like Hiro was accusing him of something he didn't do. He had done it. So I didn't really understand why Gammon was annoyed with Hiro the whole episode. And the whole episode's resolution was that Gammon had to apologise to Hiro. It felt kind of weird, like he wasn't the hurt party, but he was the one who was upset. And I genuinely thought that that was going to be this twist, that it was a different Digimon that broke the tablet. And Gammon was sick of taking the blame for something that he didn't do. Or something, but no, Gammon actually did break the tablet. He did bite it. The start of the episode shows us that it was Gammon because Hiro is able to see if it's a match for his tooth marks when he does do when he does bite it, and it was. But I was still expecting it to be like maybe it's a runaway Betsumon Gammon or something, or maybe there's a Gammon, another one that's running around. I don't know, but it turned out to just be plain and simple. It was Gammon, which was kind of a bit of a bummer. So the main story and the main mon of the week is that a Kalmaramon which is the calamari water beast spirit evolution from Frontier, is turning things into bent, twisted, spiral objects. Uh, that's literally everything that she's doing that to. So objects, animals, people, there's a lot of body horror here. So Gammon and Hiro and also Jellymon, interestingly, go off to investigate uh, what is happening with all these spiral things. And the reason for that is that Espimon has also had his arm turned into a spiral thing. We also find out that Espimon is stalking Hiro because he's told that there's a hero by Hiro's father that's a splitting image of him. That's just most likely a dad just saying, oh yes, he's, he's you know, chip off the old block, looks exactly like me. And Espimon's taking that a little bit too literally and is looking for a... Uh, like a one-for-one -one exact copy of Hero's father, which isn't the case. It's just general, normal genetics, I guess. So Espimon's in this episode, so that's cool. We do have a recurring character. So then the, uh, the big fight happens, and we're able to have Hero control Jellymon's attacks, which I'm kind of annoyed that it was just kind of something that was just brushed off, that was just easily done and barely mentioned uh, the, the fact that it, it happened. It's, it feels like a little bit of a, a weird thing to just kind of brush off, because we've only seen it once before, and it was also with Jellymon, and it was with Ruli. It is cool that we're doing it more than just that one time in that one episode. It is nice that we're doing that, but it felt kind of a weird thing not to address. Something else about this episode is that I'm genuinely starting to miss the the older Ghost Game episodes, where, and I know I complained about these at the time, but they were, they had a big chunk of the investigation. And then I said, oh, because we have this great investigation part, whenever we come to the actual conclusion of the episode, it's a quick conclusion. This episode, on the other hand, and a lot of the most recent episodes of Ghost Game, have had the start of the episode basically launch straight into the plot without any investigation and then we somehow still tend to not resolve the episode uh, in a like with a long time. It's a quick resolution, and this episode has a quick resolution. It's actually kind of like a weird like blink and the blink and you'll miss any reasoning for why it was resolved. We just have Kalmaramon, I guess, see the beauty in straight objects, which it feels like something that like you know you could have easily missed if you just weren't paying attention for five seconds. Like I had to rewind. Like, hang on, did I miss like you know? 
the, the, the hero telling, hey, naughty, naughty Cal Maramon, people don't like being twisted into knots, and Cal Maramon going, whoops, my bad. No, it was just Cal Maramon sees the beauty of straight objects when Canon Weissmon attacks her. And we also uh, have Canon Weissmon revert to Cal Scammon, which we've kind of seen that there's some limit to how long you can have the perfect evolution uh, happening for. So... That was kind of a little bit of a uh, a weird jumble of, like, concepts put into one episode. The fact that evolutions can't be held, especially at the perfect level, for, you know, an indefinite time. They do revert. We also have the fact that hu uh, the human partner can control another Digimon, which is he's able to control Jellymon. It's weird that it's only been Jellymon that we've been able to control uh, in both in both of those cases, maybe it's just unique to Jellymon. I don't know. It is nice that we can do it again, but it felt like it was just kind of anticlimactic that it, that it just sort of happened. It wasn't just mentioned. And unlike the Jellymon and Ruli episode, while I didn't like that episode, uh, it did have Ruli and Jellymon bond enough for this to happen. Hero and Jellymon don't seem to really interact this episode. Uh, it just sort of happens. Which feels kind of a little bit anticlimactic compared to the episode where Ruli and Jellymon have like a heart to heart and they were able to sink in that moment. Hero doesn't really have that moment. And it, it kind of makes the, the moment feel less special. I on for some reason I just like when he said the attack, I was like, Oh, of course. The, he's he's doing it with Gammon. Wait, that's Jellymon attacking. Oh, I guess that's happening. It was a very quick kind of thing and Again, even though we didn't have the whole investigation part of the start of the episode and it jumped straight into the plot, it still felt like it was running out of time to explain certain things or to add certain things. The resolution seemed rushed, and the fact that we could have Jellymon uh, use her attacks with Hero felt kind of rushed. She didn't even evolve, uh, which would have been cooler if she, we got her to evolve. It was just the attack, uh, which I guess... That maybe that's why we didn't get her bonding with Hero, but also it felt like it would have been nicer if we had her have some like you know heart to heart with Hero, like we had in Ruli and Jellymon's um, heart to heart synchronization episode. I don't know. So this episode felt like it was lacking compared to uh, previous episodes. It was probably one of my least favorite episodes, and it's something that I guess I'm starting to worry about this series that the pacing seems to be all over the shop for a lot of episodes. Some episodes, and most recently we have had a few episodes that are really well paced, but the solutions still feel kind of rushed. There's a lot of concepts, and Ghost Game loves to show us concepts, loves to show us things, but it shows us things, but it doesn't really tell us much about them, and I know you meant to show, not tell, but at this point I would really like them to do a little bit of telling, just as a treat. We do have... Um, Hero wondering how his dad got to the digital world at the end of the episode. That was kind of cool. But again, it was a lot of individual concepts meshed into one episode. Still, there, there, there's other things that it could have done better, but there's a lot of things it could have done worse. But in general, this episode felt like it was just meshing together of things. Again, super cool that we got the uh, secondary partner being used again. I do like that concept. I hope that it comes back and we get more from it than just it just is able to happen now, especially when there's no bonding involved. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of things that I would like to see in future episodes, and I'm hoping that we can do better from this. But yeah, and also, yay, more Espimon. I'm glad that we got Espimon as a character. He can do his invisible things, like in Digimon Dreamers, which I've been translating on this channel if you want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was just super cool to see Espimon. Big fan of Espimon. I like him more and more every week, so that's good. And the body horror was super graphic in this episode, uh, especially with the twisted dogs and twisted people especially, was kind of super horrifying. Did not really expect that. But in any case, those are my thoughts for this week's episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like this video and please subscribe. I'm still trying to get to 12,000 subscribers by the end of the month and I've only got like 80 to go and it's only got a few days left of the month, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Tell your friends, tell your neighbours, tell your enemies, tell your great-aunt Patricia, hey, follow this uh, YouTube channel. 
about Digimon. I'm sure that your great aunt Patricia will really appreciate that. So please subscribe if you haven't already. Tell your friends. I'm really trying to get to 12,000 subs. But in any case, yep, those are my thoughts. Like, comment, subscribe, etc, etc. And of course, I'll see you on the next video. Bye!